Welcome back to another speedrun, rapid speedrun episode and let's start. First opponent, Mexican guy in 1294 E5 has played. So I think I played Knight C3 in one of the games, but let's go for classical approach. Let's go for Knight F3. Again, D6, Philidor defense, it's not the main opening as it allows me to take the center right away in this game so there is actually a good game like a, a classic game i think it starts with uh d takes a5 and now has he has to take queen f3 d takes a5 bishop c4 i don't remember who played it but it's a very well known game after d takes a5 bishop c4 there is also threat of queen b3 attacking this pawn and this pawn. Let's say knight f6, queen b3. And now queen f6, I think queen b3 should be good. I'm attacking on, f on b7, potentially on f7. I can castle. Okay, this move weakens diagonal g5, a8. So I also think the past the approach will be to, to castle and go for f4 open f file and try to attack weak square on f7 this move i don't like this move this shouldn't be right let's play here and f4 is my threat i'm wondering if king h1 would be a great idea it should be f4 and I think I'm, I'm just a lot better. I could have played knight 3 knight 5 probably, or anything, something like this. But again, I can play knight 3 knight 5 right now. Let's play knight 3 I'm wondering if I should have played this right away. I'm not sure. But I mean, now I think if takes queen f5 i can even bishop f4 and now this is protected by the way that's why it couldn't be taken so i'm wondering if this is the right approach wait bishop f4 queen h5 no but i think i'm just winning after bishop f4 because let's say queen d4 rook d1 queen h5 i take and then take on wait or i can't take on f7 right takes takes or i can actually because there is rook f1 afterwards and i'm taking okay that's actually interesting my position should be winning uh here i have to play carefully i have to play something like a4 to prevent b5 from happening or i can take on b8 b8 and then try to go for this but then rook f8 I'm not sure if I'm actually, I can actually do that. What if bishop e2 is played? Queen g6. So I have several moves. I would like to play a4. I can also try to go for this and let's say b5, bishop e2. And I restrict all his pieces, but I will go. Um, yeah, I'll go for a4. If knight d7, I can play rook d1 probably. Okay, he's going for knight g6, which I think is actually a bad move, because I now can take and take on f7, but let's not rush with it. Let's play this, because I also have rook f5 at some point and double my rooks on f-file. So, let's, let's be very calm. Let's not rush with our decisions. Because in chess, if you rush a little more than you have to, you'll probably make some mistakes. And now look, he's actually plundering this pawn on f7, but I don't want to even take it. I want to play something like rook f5 and then bishop f7, bishop g6. Or I can play, yeah, I'll play rook f5 because after queen h6, I have this and this. And I'm a lot better. And I, I shouldn't even take on f7, I can play rook f1. To create even more pressure on f7 pawn because he won't be able to defend it okay this and the point is pawn on f7 cannot be protected 
And now I'm just threatening bishop f7, bishop g6, and he will have to take, because I will be threatening checkmate on f8. Or he can play knight d7, but again, I can just play rook f7, bishop f7, bishop g6, or bishop f7, bishop g6, and win the game quite easily. There are all sorts of threats here. I can even play some weird move after knight d7, let's say bishop e6. And let's say f takes, queen e6, King h8, rook f8, and then queen g4, but there is checkmate on f1. Okay, disregard this, this was nonsense. Yeah, but actually we're putting pressure with all my pieces on f7. This king can't defend, this rook can't defend, and this rook is out of place. Basically, black can't do anything. And now I can play bishop f7. Rook f7, rook f7. King h8, bishop g6, and I'm completely winning because I'm threatening rook f8 checkmate. He's not able to do, and now this. Oh, and now he decided to blunder, but okay. Check. Okay, now queen g8 check. Queen h8. h4, and queen h4 checkmate. We won the first game of the day, and let's move on. New 10 minutes. We're going to play with white pieces again, by the way. And again, e5. Let's go for classical approach. Again, let's hope our pawn doesn't play d6. Okay, knight c6. Classic Italian game now. I want to show you some traps, actually. I hope my pawn will play bishop c5. Yeah, and I will castle now, and let's see what he will be able to do now, because knight f6, and I'll show you interesting trap. I'm not sure if he knows all the theory, but d4 is actually a very annoying move, and if you don't know how to play against it, you're lost. Let's see, now d5 is the only move in this position. Let's see if he knows it. Actual move in this position, I'll play it more and more so you can learn. Bishop d4. This look, move looks weird, but it's the best move. Here, actually, I think I have bishop f7, knight g5, and queen g4. I'm not sure if I have anything better, but I think this is how it should be played. Though I'm not pretty sure. But I think because black skin is in the center, I have better chances to checkmate it. Okay, this is... But now I can just basically go back with my bishop so the point is i don't know how why he didn't take but there is also some bishop g5 interesting move but now bishop is seven i don't want to go into this let's play bishop b3 now my bishop is looking is looking towards this interesting and very weak king and now i think i can play knight g5 i can play bishop g5 i can play just knight d5 and queen h5 and just ask a question, what's the next move? I can even play a 4 I think. A 4 I mean Queen h5 looks really intimidating and interesting. Like I'm attacking this knight, g6 might be the option. Okay, but now I think bishop g5 and doesn't feel like a little trouble here. And let's say even rook e1 here. Like, I'm not sure if I'm not just... Okay, this looks interesting. This looks really interesting. I might even play knight d2, knight d4. Okay, let's play actually knight d2 and knight d4 threat. Because it feels like I can play almost any move here. Because my bishop is like really strong on b3. This king on f8 is just awful. Because look. Oh, but now I think knight e4 might be good. Also, just queen h6, check. And queen g7, knight e4. And yeah, queen g7, knight e4. And the point is queen h6, check. And then I take bishop on c5. And I'm of a piece. So let's see if it happens. And I'll be completely winning. Okay, he plays this, which 
I don't think is a good move. Because let's say, let, let's play queen h4 maybe. Because now I'm threatening queen d8, I'm threatening bishop h6, which can be easily missed at this point. Basically, some move like, okay, bishop h6, and the point is bishop e4, queen f6. Oh my goodness, that would be beautiful if it is being played on the board, but let's see if he does it or he won't. Because this will be a very like, nasty move. Yeah, he, he at this point, I mean, the position is just resignable. Because I'm winning this. Of course, if you take, take the position is just... I mean, it's over, basically, but he can play on with it. I mean, at this level... Okay, now nasty queen f6. Because this is pinned. This is pinned. Queen can take on f6. King e8, bishop g7. Or queen g7. I would maybe play bishop g7. Yeah, and he resigns, we win the game. Next game, we're playing with black pieces. Final end will be the last game for today. c5. d6. Takes. Knight d4, knight f6. We are playing Nidorf. Let me know if I should play 5. Or I should play Karakan. Or I should play French. Or something like. Like any other openings you would prefer. Bishop e6, a3, and we play h5, preventing g4 idea. Okay, queen d2, we play knight bd7. And now maybe rook e8 and try to go for p5, b4 attack. So the point is when you have opposite castle kings, it's very important to attack. And whoever is attacking first will win the game. So let's play h4 to prevent g4 from happening. Of course, now this h4 I created weakness for myself because he can actually try to attack it by playing bishop g5, queen f2. But I mean, we're not afraid of it. If g4 happens or g3, I can just take and play g6. And the point is, I didn't castle my king yet. I mean, I can always do it, or I can go king f8, king g7, and keep rook on h8. Because if I go with this, this, uh, probably I'll spend the same amount of moves. Now he's going for rook g6, but the point is I'll always be able, let's play knight h5, and I think I'm up in exchange, because if take takes bishop f7, I'm winning, as far as I can see, and if bishop g4, Rook g4, bishop g4, queen g4, I can go back, I'm up in exchange. I can also sacrifice the exchange myself by playing rook c3 and playing queen c7 and then try to attack this pawn on c3. So there are different plans for both sides, but queen g2 I think was a mistake, because he allowed me this knight h5 move, and now... Okay, this is actually an interesting move. I think I've played knight f4 actually. Attacking and now I'm attacking this rook again And the point is now I think rook d5 might be the only option For white pieces because I'm attacking rook or rook g4 let's say but I'll just take And again as I said King f8 king g7 Knight d5 I think um, Actually right now it becomes really Interesting. Because as bef as my king is not castle, there might be some annoying threats, but let's say knight c5. Knight, there is knight d4 actually and some knight f5. But good, the good thing for me is that this bishop is out of play for now. Mm, queen c Eight. Okay, knight g6 won't work. 
For now it won't work, because I'll just go king of eight. He might play rook d6, but then some rook g5, rook f6. Okay, the position is getting very complicated, and I'm happy it's getting complicated. I'm not just, not just winning like in 20 moves. Okay, but now I, I might have... Okay, look, my queen is kind of watching towards this. What if I play five and b4? Okay, this might be actually bad because I weakened my b5 and he might somehow attack it. But again, king f I have this king of 8, king g7 maneuver for now. So I should be safe. Knight e5 is a bit annoying because... Oh, but now I'm actually happy to trade. I'll just play b4 because now it takes rook c1 checkmate. Okay, queen c5. Knight d5, I might play just... Okay, just stakes now. Look, but this end game, I mean, I'm up in exchange. And let's say some bishop g5 might be really annoying. And now I'm able to castle at some point. So I think now I'm just winning. And if knight d5 happens, I can play. Okay, right now I want to play bishop f6, bishop f5, or bishop f6, queen d4. The point here I can just castle. Okay, I'm not sure if I should castle actually. Or play some. No, but if I take in the 7. I wanna castle actually. Because this way queen c5 takes and I have this pawn on b4 protecting, but if I just take, take, and somehow if white managed to take pawn on b4, I might get in trouble. So let's prevent it from happening and just play simple. And now queen g1. Queen g1 and I want to keep queen on the board. Because that way I might create even more threats. Okay, now he trades. Yeah, that's good. Okay, now king is going here. What if I play f5 but then e5 might be really bad. So why don't start with rook d but f5? This position is really getting interesting. This? And I really want to go for f5. Or rook h8 even. But f5 is my main threat at the moment. Because I want to open that file and try to create like more weaknesses. Knight is going to d7. So why I don't move rook d8 and try to go for rook d4, bishop f5, or bishop f4, rook d2, but then there's always knight d5, but then f5 takes, and I go on the open f file. Okay, but the point now is, I think bishop f2 and bishop f3 will be really strong. And this knight can't do anything, bishop f3 and rook d2, and then bishop d4. Yeah, I think uh, now I'm just winning. I was a bit worried, yeah, that he will be able to manage to create some troubles for me, but I'm lucky he didn't. And now he has to make a move, and he doesn't have a lot of moves, except for this one, but I don't think it's a good move at all, because I can just go... Okay, I'll just... Probably take and go rook h8. And maybe bishop d4 and try to go for rook b8 or rook a8. Trying to take the spawn, rook b8. Okay, but now I'm winning because he blundered that I have this. And basically he has to move his knight and I'm going rook a3. And he doesn't have a lot of squares, like I, I can only see knight b6, which is not losing by force, because after knight b2, bishop b2, knight c3, rook a3, and I'm taking this. And win the game. 
let's go three wins out of three i hope you enjoy it let me know any of the f i mean give me the feedback all right what ombering should i play what do you expect how long do you think it will take me to get to 2000 and then to 2200 and i'll see you in the next video bye bye